worship pastors and sound techs. It's 2022. We don't have to have sterile, unnatural, dry sounding live streams. Not when most digital soundboards have built in effects if we know how to use them properly. Let's talk about it. Welcome to Blueprint Sounds. My name is Nathan Smith. So glad you're joining me. Today, we're going to talk about effects in your live mix for Sunday mornings because they add so much and they can make people who are joining by phone or by computer feel like they're part of the experience more if we know how to use those effects properly. Before we get to that, I want to give you something for free. If you go to blueprintsounds.com, you can get access to my free 45-minute workshop, Five Elements of a Full Sounding Worship Team. Because it doesn't matter how good your sound tech is, if your band doesn't know how to arrange themselves properly into a unit, it's going to be really hard for your sound tech to mix. But a well-arranged band makes the job of the sound tech so much easier. They will thank you. So if you haven't checked that out yet, go to blueprintsounds.com and get access to my free 45-minute workshop. With that, let's get into the first tip on how to use reverb and delay. So here we are in Logic Pro X, but don't worry, the theory and the tips that I'm going to show you would work on any digital board or even an analog board without board gear. So quick word about our routing. Here I have my vocal, which is what we're going to be looking at mostly, and I have it routed from bus 21 sending to right there, bus 21 on this auxiliary track called room verb. And on that room verb, I have put a large room reverb plugin. So let's play it to hear what it sounds like. Right on my heart. Okay, so it's got about a one and a half second delay. We're not going to worry so much about what all the ins and outs of this are because it might be different on your, uh, on your particular plugin. What we're going to look at is how much to use and how to sculpt it a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take down the fader on my reverb auxiliary track to the floor. I'm going to play the track and slowly bring it up because this is sort of best practice with reverb. You start from nothing and you're going to bring that verb up until it gets to where you can feel it and then finally where you can hear it. When I say feel it, you want your audience to enjoy that sense of space and, and almost wonder if it's there. But if you've pushed it so hard to where they can obviously tell that it is happening, oh, that's an effect, then it starts to show its hand a little bit too much and it, and it becomes a distraction rather than helping the sound um, feel, give that fullness. So I'm going to start to play it and slowly bring it up to where I think it's, um, it's audible and then I'm going to bring it back a little bit. Right on my heart and rise in my heart come and make it your home Calls out to deep. That's pretty good. Yeah, so I, I brought it to about negative two, and then I thought, eh, that's, that's a little bit much. So then I dropped it down to about negative five. And that's, it's not bad. It still is um, a little bit noticeable, but it's it's much better, any any more than about that volume. And I would probably think, eh, that's, that's becoming a little bit obvious. Well, here's what we can do with verb to make sure that we have a natural sound that isn't too in your face. If I do push it up, it's not that all of the reverb becomes overbearing, it's that some of the reverb becomes overbearing. And let me show you what I'm talking about. On the S's and the T's and the P's, those things are called plosives. That really excites a reverb unit above and beyond other sounds. And, and the S's and the T's and the P's, that's all up here. This is a frequency graph, so we've got you know low stuff down here all the way up to 20. Right in here is where it gets excitable and, and it just shows its hand too much, right? The T's, the P's, the S's especially really makes that reverb bloom and it sounds like a bathroom. You know, it sounds like you're singing in the shower, a very, very large shower, but a shower nonetheless. So how do you fix that? Because I want to use reverb, but that was obviously too much. So I'm going to have to pull back, but then I'm not really getting quite what I want. Well, here's what you do. You go and you call up an EQ, just like you have an EQ for a vocal or a snare drum or whatever, but you're going to call up an EQ for your reverb. I'm going to use a shelf right here so you can see that you can turn it up, turn it down, 
the first thing I'm gonna do is take that shelf and take out the top end. Because that's where all the S's and the P's and the T's were living on the reverb unit. Well, I don't need that, right? Because right here in this mid-range is where you're gonna feel the reverb. Right up here is where you're gonna hear the reverb. I'm also going to use this shelf and take out the bottom end. The reason why I do that is because I'm not just putting vocal through this reverb unit, I'm also putting a little bit of everything, piano, maybe cello, and the low end, you know, right down 50, 100, that type of stuff, that needs to stay focused and tight. You want your low end to be predictable and uh, not move around and not get too big on you. Um, when you have low end going through a reverb, it can quickly become unruly and washy and make it sound really flubby. And all of a sudden your low end that you spent so much time sculpting, you know, your kick drum and your, your bass, uh, it doesn't sound good anymore. And it sounds really woofy and can really, really wreak havoc on you because the low end has a lot of energy in it. So I'm going to lope off the top and I'm going to lope off the bottom to keep it you know, under control, and again, to get rid of the S's and the P's, what I'm left is the mid-range. And that means that I get that sense of a reverb, but now it's actually much darker. The, the echo is much darker than it used to be, because when you take off the top end, it has, has the effect of making it feel darker. So now let's listen to it again, and I'm going to start from zero and bring it up until I think that it's comfortable. Oh. On my heart and rise in my heart, come and make it your home. Deep calls out to thee, you alone are worthy of a living offering. Come and make it your home. Nice. So I got to negative three in the two regions before I thought I could really hear this thing. Whereas before, I was more like five. So that's that's a, a good enough difference to say, oh, well, I can use more reverb if I take off the bottom and the top. And still, even at this level, I'm not so much hearing it obviously as, as I am feeling it. So to show you really the difference that's happening here is I'm going to solo the reverb unit. So now all you're hearing is what's coming out of the unit. You're not hearing any of the dry, you know, unaffected sound. It's just what's coming out of the reverb. And we're going to play it with it engaged right now. And then I'm going to take these two out. And you can hear the difference between not having the reverb on and having it on. So here it is with it on. And off. And rise in my heart. Let's do that again. Notice how sizzly it is when you don't have the EQ in. It sounds dark and muffled, which is what we want because we want it to hide behind the pure vocal. Um, but when it's off, it's it's quite noticeable. Let's do that one more time. Right, so you went from being comfortable and nicely hidden and tucked underneath the regular vocal to where you had this nice, this nice sense of reverb to suddenly when you hear the S's and the T's and the P's, it really, it really tips you off that, oh, there is something going on here. There's a lot of reverb. And that's, that is one of the tricks that you can use to make your reverb really sit underneath the mix and help build the mix so that people say, ooh, that sounds really nice. People don't say, wow, you strapped a reverb unit on top of all that. So that is the top tip for today. Hey, I hope you found that video helpful. Make sure once again to go to blueprintsounds.com to get access to my free worship workshop. Because it doesn't matter how good your effects are, your sound tech will have an uphill battle if the band doesn't know how to arrange themselves. And that's what that video covers. So stay tuned. There are three more videos to give you even more help on reverb and delay coming out. But until then, God bless and goodbye.